All right, so the last page includes two questions, and both of them pertain to hypothesis testing. So question 11 is just a series of um, true or false statements. So for question 11, the EPA conducted a test to assess if the population average carbon monoxide level is higher than 4.9 parts per million. So we're testing the null hypothesis that the population um, mean equals 4.9 against the alternative that the population average carbon monoxide level is greater than 4.9, and we're using a 5% significance level. So, so the random sample of 25 carbon, carbon monoxide readings gave a sample mean of 5.4, a sample standard deviation of 1.03, a test statistic value of 2.43 with a p-value of 0 0.011. All right, so let's go through each statement one by one. So the value of 5% represents a tolerable risk of concluding the population average carbon dioxide level is greater than 4.9 ppm when in fact is not. So concluding that the population average carbon dioxide level is greater than 4.9 ppm when that's, in, when that's incorrect is your type 1 error. So question A is basically describing the risk of a type 1 error, which is your significance level alpha, so which is, point fi or which is 5 percent in this question. So this statement is true. Your significance level is just the tolerable risk of, of making a type 1 error. So for B, the power of the test is the probability that EPA correctly concludes the population average carbon monoxide level is greater than 4.9 ppm. So recall that the power of the test is just um, accepting accepting the alternative hypothesis when it, when it is true. So in this case, your alternative hypothesis is that the population average carbon monoxide level is greater than 4.9 ppm. So B is also true. For C, the standard normal distribution was used to calculate the p-value of 0 0.011. The standard normal distribution only applies when you're calculating z-values or z-scores. And in this case, we're using the t-distribution. So C is false. C, the p-value of 0 0.11 is the probability that the null hypothesis is true. That's completely false. The null hypothesis is either true or not, so the probability is either 0 or 1. The p-value is the probability of observing your test statistic or more extreme given that the null hypothesis is true. So D is false. Finally, E, based on the data, the carbon monoxide level in all areas in downtown Los Angeles is greater than 4.9. So this part is wrong. We're testing if the population average carbon monoxide level in the downtown Los Angeles area is higher than 4.9 parts per million, not if the carbon monoxide level in all areas is greater than 4.9. So that would be false. All right, last question, question 12. A researcher conducts an experiment on human memory and recruits 10 people to participate in her study. She performs the experiment and analyzes the results. She obtains a p-value of 0.13, which of the following is a reasonable interpretation of her results. And her significance level was 10%. So one, this proves that her experimental treatment has no effect on memory. That's wrong. You can't use small, uh, strong language like proofs. Your results either support the alternative or doesn't support the alternative, but it can't prove anything. Two, she should reject the null hypothesis. Well, since her p-value 0.13 is greater than the significance level of 0.1, you cannot reject the null hypothesis, which by process of elimination leaves you with a last statement. Three, there could be a treatment effect, but the sample size was too small to detect it. That's a reasonable statement because the sample size is pretty small. And due to that small sample of a size, um, the power of the test might not have been great enough to observe the treatment effect. All right, and that concludes the solutions for winter 2012, exam two.